What's up guys, David here, and Apple just announced a brand new iPhone. Like we're not even halfway through the year yet, but we have a new iPhone. It's not the iPhone 12, that's still later this year, I hope, but it's the second generation of the iPhone SE, their budget smartphone that comes in at a price of just $400. Now, obviously at $400, Apple's not performing magic. You're not gonna get all the features that you would get on the more expensive 11 or 11 Pro, but, you know, I'm taking a look at the specs here. This phone actually looks like a pretty good deal. Now, probably the main feature on this phone, like the one that really counts at this price point, is the fact that you're still getting that industry-leading A13 Bionic chip. This is the chip that all the other Android manufacturers wish they could put in their phones, but they can't, and Apple's putting it in a $400 smartphone. What does that mean? Well, one, the phone's gonna be fast, like maybe not as fast as the 11 or 11 Pro, we don't know about the RAM yet, but it's gonna be fast, Two, it's gonna allow this phone to do things that you wouldn't be able to do without that processing power, which mainly has to do with the camera. We'll talk about that in a second. And three, and I think this is the big one, because it has that A13 Bionic chip, Apple is going to most likely support this phone for many years to come with the latest version of iOS. Like there wouldn't be any reason for them not to push out updates considering it has the latest and greatest in terms of chipsets. Now, there are some other features on this phone that you wouldn't expect at this price point. You get wireless charging, which is incredible to have at $400. You also get fast charging. Like it doesn't come with a fast charger in the box, but neither does the iPhone 11. However, it supports fast charging. And the last main upgrade on this phone is the camera. While it seems like the same camera on the iPhone 8, because of that 813 Bionic chip, it comes with portrait mode. So you're gonna be able to get that beautiful background blur and the foreground's gonna be in focus, makes it look like your photos are coming out of a professional camera. You get smart HDR. And when it comes to video, you'll also get extended dynamic range. So camera will see an upgrade mostly on the processing side, but everything else is very similar to the iPhone 8. I mean, it's got like the same body as the iPhone 8. The battery life is gonna be around the same as the iPhone 8. According to Apple, of course, we'll run our tests and find out for sure. The screen is the same as the iPhone 8 and uh, the, its level of water resistance is also the same at IP67. Now, none of that is actually a bad thing, but it shares more in common with the iPhone 8 than it does the 11 and 11 Pro. It's time to talk about it, okay? What's missing? Like, what are you not getting on this $400 iPhone that you would be getting if you coughed up $300 extra for the iPhone 11 or went $600 more for the iPhone 11 Pro? Well, there's quite a few things, all right? The first and, and main one has to do with the camera. So on the back, you're not getting that ultra wide camera and obviously you're also not getting the telephoto camera which only comes on the pro models. You're also not getting night mode and that's probably due to the sensor. And you're also missing audio zoom, that feature where you know when you pinch the zoom while recording a video, the microphones will kind of hone in on what you were pointing at. On the front side, I hate to break it to you guys, but you're not gonna get slow motion video. Like no slow fees. <laughs> okay, that really doesn't matter. Um, I think the big thing on the front camera is it's using that seven megapixel sensor or camera instead of the 12 megapixel. So mainly is you're not gonna get that wide angle look, like where you turn it to the side and you get a wide angle. Apple is using image cropping in order to be able to do that on their 11 series. And you're just gonna have the same selfie cam as you did on the iPhone 8. Another thing worth mentioning is you're not getting face ID. You're getting touch ID instead. And some people may prefer that, but without face ID, it also means you're not getting true depth. So no emojis, no memojis, none of those AR features that you get on the front camera on these phones. But again, that's probably not a deal breaker for a lot of people, especially at this price point. And uh, last two things that I've been able to see that this phone is missing is the U1 chip that gives the iPhone spatial awareness. So far, I haven't even used that feature on my iPhone 11 Pro, so Probably not gonna be a big deal, at least not in the short term. And then uh, Dolby Atmos is not supported. So you're not gonna get that spatial sound, but you are getting dual speakers. So overall, I'm actually looking forward to this phone. It's gonna launch on the 17th officially, or it's gonna be available for pre-order. Pricing starts at 399 for the 64 gigabyte model. And the phone comes in three different colors. You have white, black, and that sweet looking product red. But I'm excited to test it. We'll be doing the speed test, the battery test, probably the drop test, so subscribe if you haven't already. But um, outside of that, I'll see you guys in the very next episode.